காலேஜ் செகண்ட் இயர்ல இருந்தீங்கன்னா இல்ல காலேஜ் தேர்ட் இயர்ல இருந்தீங்கன்னா ஐம் ஷோர் த ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் லெவல்ஸ் பி வெரி வெரி ஹை ரைட் நவ் ஏன்னா தேர்ட் இயர்ல தான் வந்து மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த கம்பெனிஸ் வில் கம் ஃபார் இன்டர்ன்ஷிப்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபோர்த் இயர்ல வந்து பிளேஸ்மெண்ட்ஸ் வர கம்பெனிஸ் வர ஆரம்பிச்சிருவாங்க நீங்க சாஃப்ட்வேர் இன்ஜினியர் பொசிஷன் ரூல் அப்ளை பண்றதா இருந்தீங்கன்னா தென் தெர் இஸ் ஒன் வெரி 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 இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் டாபிக் தட் யூ ஹேவ் டு ஸ்டடி தட் இஸ் த டேட்டா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் அல்காரதம்ஸ் இஃப் யூ டோன்ட் ஸ்டடி டேட்டா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் அல்காரதம்ஸ் யூ வில் நாட் பி ஏபிள் டு கிளியர் த மெஷின் கோடிங் இன்டர்வியூ ரவுண்ட் யூ வில் நாட் பி ஏபிள் டு கிளியர் த இன்டர்வியூ ரவுண்ட்ஸ் தட் யூ ஹவ் வித் சர்டன் சாஃப்ட்வேர் இன்ஜினியர் சீனியர் software engineers and the hiring managers as well so you have to understand how do you actually traverse through the path of data structures and algorithms and do really really well in the interviews in this video we're going to be talking about exactly that if you new here my name is hari i'm a recent graduate from bits planning and i got placed in one of the day one companies at comfort placements in bits and i'm working as a software engineer now in a large nbfc in bangalore so let's just get started in the video in the full video pathing now then you will understand what are the important topics to study and what is the road map to actually study the topics and what do you actually practice and where do you actually practice problems from and where do you actually learn the things from so to start off with let's start off with the simplest and most fundamental thing which is required for problem solving that is the stl ninga suppose ninga c++ use pannadha irundinga there is something called the standard template library so you'll have to learn things like vectors set and using these kind of things it makes you makes it very easy to solve problems ninga vandu array sort pannona then you will just have to write a complete algorithm to sort functions like you know like a bubble sort or selection sort what whatever it is but if you know how to use c++ stl then you can just use sort of v.begin v.end and then quickly sort things out and that is the beauty of these kind of libraries so before learning about any other data structures initially learn about the standard template library in c++ very important very useful and it'll stay with you till your end of preparation for your software engineering interviews ninga first padira pora data structure and the one of the most important data structure that you'll be using in real life software engineering and for your software engineering interviews is arrays arrays the nare important on topic sir like sliding window how do i use a two pointer approach to solving problems and learn about these different approaches and these techniques of solving problems once you have dealt with the basics basics na na day like it's about how do i add an element into an array and how do i remove an element into an array and how do i actually traverse through an array like how do i actually use functions like auto in c++ if you're using c++ and how do i actually do different mathematical operations inside an array and these are the basics that you have to learn and once you learn the basics learn about different methodological approaches to solving problems problems in array like sliding windows and two pointers and only after that go about solving harder problems like which are like the lead code hard problems that you see in various platforms right now software engineering interviews prepare point in the mode one of the most important visited sites that i used was lead code now tungi enchone i used to open lead code and tungar munadi also i used to just go to and visit lead code and solve problems it was just lead code day in day out especially few days before the interview started and few days before my internship season started and now prepare panna mode i had in total i had solved close to 600 problems in lead code and maybe like close to 300 400 problems in geeks or geeks interview bit but that is definitely not necessary you all you have to do is understand the various fundamentals of different data structures and how do i go about solving different problems in those data structures and what are the different methods to solving those problems and understanding the basic concepts behind those data structures as well ninga idu nalla padichitinga nave then you'll have a good understanding of different data structures and solving problems ninga arrays the strength and ana odane don't directly jump your different data structure solve different tougher questions and slowly improve your level then move on to the next most important data structure that is stacks and queues stacks and queues are an extension of arrays so, i mean what stack does it's more of a last in first out approach and queue has a first in first out approach and if you learn about stacks and queues try to solve different problems in stacks and queues you know like balanced parentheses what is a valid expression these are some of the important problems that you can look into especially in platforms like lead code the stacks and queues like there's not a lot lot of problems to solve but then you know having a good grip of these problems will definitely help you out a lot like you know like if how do i use two stacks and make it convert into a queue if i can use two queues and how do i convert into a stack these are different kind of problems that you you will see while preparing for interviews but don't sleep on these kind of topics it's not a very very important topic but it's a good to know topic because like even in real life software engineering you will there are times when you will use things like queue in your real life practice as well let's welcome the next data structure in this data structure you can first of படிக்கும் போது மண்டை கொஞ்சம் குழம்பு ஆரம்பிச்சோம் கனெக்ஷன் 
between them, add this one to this, and then take that connection, put it to the next one. And how do I remove a node from the entire connection? And in case if I want to traverse to the link list, how do I go about it? And there's a popular tortoise and hare problem in doing link lists. I mean, so you'll have to understand like, okay, like one node is moving faster than the other one. You know, like one is doing node of next of next and the other node is doing node of next. And then one is moving faster than the other. Like how do they actually meet? When is, what is the time when they actually meet, right? So these kind of problems are the common problems when it comes to link lists. And there are not a different, different kind of variations when it comes to link lists. I mean, there are certain standard set of problems that you will have to solve. I mean, the problems are solved punting, you know, then link list is just going to be cakewalk for you. I mean, array stacks, use link list trust me the basics of data structures and algorithms are clear to you it is important for you to move on to the next very important set of problems and techniques to solving various problems that we'll be discussing right now software engineering interviews the important questions are either related to trees graphs or dynamic programming and before you learn about trees graphs or dynamic programming there is one very very important topic that most people skip and because of which they struggle in these three topics that is recursion if you are someone who's an intermediate level person when it comes to software engineering interviews, then trust me, spend a lot of time in just solving recursion problems. In recursion, you will get an understanding of how do I actually go about building the base cases for various problems and how do I build the logic for solving tougher problems in dynamic programming. And the most important topic of recursion is how do I take a bigger problem and how do I make it into like smaller sub problems that can be solved at an individual level. In the concept, then trust me, trees graphs and dynamic programming is going to be very easy so spend more time in solving the topic of recursion recursion is a time spent on problems different types of problems with recursion like things like 0 1 knapsack climbing staircase problems and a lot of other problems that you can look into I mean a lot of problems will have a combination of recursion and dynamic programming but then there are problems where you can just use recursion as well to solve them in recursion then go towards learning about backtracking backtracking is just like one step ahead of recursion so if you know recursion you can do backtracking really well and once you've done recursion and backtracking learn about things like greedy right you'll understand when to use an approach like greedy and when to use something like dynamic programming only once you learn greedy a problem really well right and there are different problems that you can do in greedy as well maybe i can link some of them down in the description below and once you're done with recursion backtracking and greedy way of solving problems this methods of solving problems only then move towards the next data structure link list to the unknown that is trees near trees what you want you'll understand there's a lot of similarities between link list and trees because like some ways or the other the way of traversal and the way the nodes are interconnected with each other not in the format that you would see in an array you will understand that it's sort of it's very different it's in the form of nodes and you'll understand that there's different components to it like left and right and you'll have to traverse the nodes through different different traversal techniques you know there are different traversal techniques to go about doing something like link list that is there are different traversal like an in order traversal post order traversal pre order traversal and at the same time you can use queues to traverse the trees as well it's something called level order traversal so understand the different traversal techniques and understand how to solve different problems in various traversal techniques and once you go about solving various problems when it comes to traversal learn about different other problems using trees as well things like least common ancestor and how do i actually go about finding the diameter of a tree these kind of problems are very common in trees and if you have solved a good number of problems when it comes to trees then go about learning about binary search trees binary search trees and it's just that it's trees but then they form a follow format of binary search you know like anything towards the set anything towards the left is lesser than the main node and anything towards the right is greater than the main node and anything towards the right is greater and anything towards the left is lesser that's the entire concept so if you take a node anything towards the left of that will be lesser than the main node anything towards the right will be greater than the main node and throughout the binary tree they follow that process so only then you'll understand that it's a binary tree so there are different problems which check if this is actually a binary search tree or not and there is something called in inverting a binary tree the different problems in when it comes to binary trees and binary search trees that you will have to look into standard problems but you know like they're very frequently asked in software engineering interviews trees the next important data structure is going to be graphs graphs love in a special why is this a separate data structure in a getting now any social media network is actually a complex graph you are a user which means you are a node and you have multiple friends so each friend is connected to a different kind of a node and if you want to connect with another friend who is actually not your friend but you're actually 
actually connected through a mutual friend then you know you, you are actually just one node away from him so these are the different kind of problems that can be solved using a graph data structure in a graph data structure padike modu you have to understand various traversal techniques just like how you learn how to traverse a linked list you learn how to traverse a tree and now you learning how to traverse a graph as well now ye recursion padike sonna na it's because of this very important use case when it comes to traversing trees and graphs using depth first search depth first search is nothing but recursion but in a sort of an advanced way and if you want to traverse anything which is a graph or even a tree or even let's say even something like linked list these kind of recursion techniques will really help you a lot and at the same time there are another another way of traversing through a graph that is through a breadth first search when you just put a node into a queue and then from the queue you take out the different branches and then you add that into the queue again now, these are different ways by which you can traverse a graph and you get traversal padichu mudichone learn about different algorithms that you can apply on these graphs we want to find the minimum distance between two nodes there are things that you can apply like dijkstra algorithm there are other important algorithms like prims like kruskal's algorithm that you will have to refer and try to solve them which is very very important for you in software engineering interviews right and once you learn about graphs up in a basic fashion go about solving different problems in lead code related to depth first search and breadth first search and post that learn how to solve problems using these different algorithms and once you do that move on to the most important topic of data structures algorithms that is dynamic programming i'm sure whenever you solve a problem in lead code lead to arrays or whatever it is at some point of time you will have phases error called time limit exceeded ninga epome kidikla ante na minimum time adanna solve pandra it's it's actually o of n square of o of n cube i cannot optimize it further and the way to optimize these kind of things is by actually using something called dynamic programming ninga recursion padichamudhu you will understand like how do i break a big problem into different different sub problems and ninga individual sub problems eppadi solve pannalam that's the main goal of recursion and once you understand recursion if you apply memoization if you if you tell the computer okay like this is how you solve an individual sub problem remember it when this comes up again you can just directly use it whatever you've learned before that is recursion and memoization if you know how to use recursion properly and if you have a basic understanding of array 2d arrays you'll understand how to use memoization as well and if you have an understanding of recursion memoization then that's just dynamic programming for you the dynamic programming there's two ways that you can primarily solve a dynamic programming problem that is either by using recursion and memoization or by using tabularization i generally use recursion and memoization because i was very comfortable in recursion and if you know how to use recursion memoization trust me dynamic programming is a cake walk for you and there are different types of dynamic programming problems that you need to solve string dp 1d dp 2d dp you know tree dp and even while doing problems in graph you will have to apply dynamic programming inside it you'll have to understand how do i go about solving these different problems and for that you need to practice a lot of problems. problems now on the in third year fourth year like more than i solved a lot of problems in graphs and dynamic programming i'll just drop my lead code profile in the description below so that you guys can go and see the different problems that i've solved and trust me in the last one year i've not solved a lot of problems because now on the mainly i was focusing on making myself a better software engineer primarily right i mean learning the different tech stacks how do i actually solve real world use case problems and i've not solved a lot of lead code but if you are an aspiring software engineer and if you are planning on giving interviews to software engineering data structures and algorithms is the bread and butter the basic stuff that you need to do to actually get into any one of these roles ninga unmeli if you are serious about data structures and algorithms if you are thinking about preparing for data structures and algorithms then do lead code religiously do geeks for geeks religiously and if you are citing of an advanced level ninga on the code forces mari platforms ko poi practice pannalam so that you get a better understanding of how to do tougher problems and your tough problem solve panna panna you will understand that even in contests even when it comes to real life machine coding interviews you will have a better edge because nejo software engineering interview la okaram mode you will have to understand that ninga one hour la ninga rendu problem potte aganu ninga and rendu problem podlana then you will most probably get rejected right which means that's close to like 30 minutes for a problem and if a medium problem you'll have to understand how do i do it within that 30 minute framework time work and with that you'll have to not just solve it you have to explain to the interviewer as well for that you need a lot of practice and you need to do a lot of homework we're planning on starting a community for aspiring college students who want to become software engineer and who want to make it big in the field of software engineering and artificial intelligence and other core engineering domains trying to help you out with the best possible resources and mentors who are actually industry experts out there now in the community is low start man a try point again because like i see there's a lot of demand for people who are actually they don't know what to do about doing when it comes to an ever changing world of engineering the community is to find like minded people and so that people can help themselves out and try to take the right path in moving themselves forward this is the end of the 
this video right here if you did like the video make sure to leave a like button and make sure to write subscribe into the channel as well the goal of this channel to make engineers more aware and make them more smarter about the choices that they make in their lives it's not just about doing software engineering it's not just about doing electrical engineering it's just that the world there's a lot of opportunities out there there's a lot of people that are doing very very different things in life and it's just not that following one path alone so if you are someone who's in 11th and 12th who's planning on becoming an engineer by so getting uh, solving these competitive exams or if you're someone who's actually studying an engineering college trying to get into a great job then this channel is going to be perfect for you because we mostly talk about those kind of things as well and i'll see you guys until the next video until then bye bye